everyone. This is Pastor Sue Ulrich at Locust Grove United Church of Christ, and I'm so happy to be with you here today. For those of you who have a bulletin, let's get our bulletins together and begin our call to worship, which is from Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord singing aloud a song of thanksgiving, and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory abides. And let us join in our opening hymn, More Love to You, O Christ.
are printed in our bulletins. Gracious God, how thankful we are to come before you in this time of worship. We ask that you would bless this service and each one watching, that we may grow in our faith and in our walk with you. Open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds as we listen to your word and as we strive to follow you. May our statement of faith be something we not only say with our words, but also with our lives. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come found. Fix in us a humble dwelling, all your faithful mercies crown. Jesus, you are all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with your salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh, breathe, your loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in you inherit, lest us find your promised rest. Take away our love of sinning, our fault and omega be and of faith as its beginning set our hearts at liberty today our epistle lesson is from romans 12. love love must be sincere hate what is evil cling to what is good be devoted to one another in brotherly love Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spirit fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will keep burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew 16, 21 through 28. Jesus predicts his death. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Out of my sight, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, 
He must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet for forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And let us go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today to hear your word. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts through the words of song, through the words of scripture, and through the words you have given me. And may all that we do and all that we say bring you honor and glory and praise for we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Last Sunday, I shared a poem by Anne Weems called God. And there was a line that I mentioned that I liked in that poem. God is the question with whom we contend throughout our lives. And the question we contended with last Sunday, and I hope some of this week, was the question Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say I am? It is a question for all disciples, all followers of Jesus. One of the ways we can answer this question is to look at our lives and see how we live out our faith. We are good people who go to church, who have committed our lives to God, to Jesus. Yet we all need to take a spiritual inventory from time to time and see how we are living out our faith. It's so easy for us to get comfortable in our spiritual walk. Sometimes we need a little uncomfortable as we look at ourselves and see just how comfortable we are. The disciples were somewhat comfortable those three years walking beside Jesus. They were years filled with wonder and awe at this man named Jesus. They observed God work through him in the miracles he did and in the things he taught. Oh, they saw how the religious leaders of the day looked at him. But that didn't bother them, because they were sure he was the Messiah. But they probably never thought it would end as it did, or should I say end and then begin as it did. Our passage from this week begins with the words, from this time on. Because from this time on, the disciples will hear things that will not make them comfortable. That is, if they are listening. For Jesus will now be asking something of them and telling them exactly what it means that he is the Messiah. And Jesus is challenging us as well. Even if we have read this passage many times, we are called to have open eyes, open hearts, and open minds. For Jesus will challenge us as well. Peter was the star of our reading last week. He was the star pupil who gave the right answer and took the other disciples off the hook. He answered the question, who do you say I am with the correct answer? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. But those words were connected to Peter's definition of what it meant to him that Jesus was the Messiah. Yet when in our passage for today, Jesus told Peter his definition by telling him what was going to happen to him, 
that he would undergo suffering at the hands of the scribes and the religious leaders, the priests, and that he would die. Peter the rock became Peter the stumbling block as he pulled Jesus aside to rebuke him. I would imagine, though, that all of the disciples wanted to do that. They loved Jesus and couldn't bear to hear these words. And they didn't believe this would happen to their Messiah. They just didn't understand. As Jesus rebukes Peter, though, he tells him that his mind is not on things of God, but on earthly things. And then Jesus tells them all what it means to be his follower. He uses the word deny. We must deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Deny ourselves. I tend to think we live in a society that really doesn't understand the phrase deny ourselves, at least not until recently. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have had to deny ourselves some of the things we are used to, like the ability to go out and eat, or to go to a store and be able to find everything on the shelves that we need, or to be around friends and loved ones. I know the residents at the nursing home where I am the chaplain have denied themselves so much We've denied them so much to keep them safe in this pandemic. But very few times do we willingly deny ourselves anything, if we are honest. Very few times do we deny ourselves things that make us happy or things we like to eat or do, except perhaps at Lent. Jesus was telling the disciples and you and me that to be his followers, we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. For if we live this life to save it, do only think things we want and live our lives the way we want and gain the whole world, what good is that? Because in the end, we lose. Yet isn't that how so many live today? doing only what they want, never thinking of their neighbor's needs or what God would want? Sadly, it is so. You and I are called to make the decisions to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. But what does that look like? I think it looks a lot like what the Apostle Paul wrote in our passage from Romans chapter 12. Listen again to some of what he encourages us to do. He begins with love sincerely, share with God's people in need, cling to what is good, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If we are honest, some of the things on this list our human nature tells us not to do, like blessing those who persecute us, or to not repay evil with evil, to overcome evil with good, live at peace with everyone, and to not be proud but to associate with people of low position. Our human nature isn't wired to do these things naturally, to deny ourselves and live this way. One of my favorite authors, Donald Miller, in his book, Blue Like Jazz, recalls a time when he was in San Francisco staying at a bed and breakfast place specifically for people who have come to the city to do ministry. This B&B was in a small house, but there were probably 15 people living there from time to time. The man who ran the place, Bill, was always making meals and cleaning up after the people who were staying there. And Donald took notice of how patient and kind Bill was. He noticed that not all of the people staying there washed their dishes after the meal, or even thanked Bill for cooking. One morning before everyone was awake, Bill and Donald were drinking coffee at the dining room table. And Donald told him that he lived with five guys 
And that was very difficult for him because he liked his space and needed his privacy. So we asked Bill how he kept such a good attitude all of the time with so many people abusing his kindness. Bill set down his coffee mug and looked Donald in the eye. Don, he said, if we are not willing to wake up in the morning and die to ourselves, perhaps we should ask ourselves whether or not we are really following Christ. Let me read that again. If we are not willing to wake up in the morning and die to ourselves, perhaps we should ask ourselves whether or not we are really following Christ. When I first read that, I have to admit it took my breath away. And I felt very convicted by these words. I even typed them up and I have them on the wall in my office at the nursing home. Partly I have done this because it is so powerful, but also because I can be a very selfish, self-centered person. I like things my way, and I like to do what I want. And I even like God to do and be what I want. And sometimes, like Peter, I want to rebuke him now and then. But that is not what Jesus is calling me to do. So I look at these words, and I try to remember to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow him. Unless we deny our human nature, these are not things that come naturally to you and me. Maybe what you and I are called to do is to let go of our agendas and to see where the Lord is calling us, to place ourselves totally in God's hands and see where God will take us. Now that can be scary, especially when we think I have our lives planned out, but it can be rewarding too. It's a choice we make, as Bill said, to die to ourselves every day, to choose God's plan and not our own, and to put the needs of others first. I remember that not so long ago, I was comfortable, yet a little bored. And I asked God if there was something I could do. Little did I know how my life would change. <laughs> my chaplaincy position was changed to part-time, when the nursing home I work at was sold, and God called me to this church as part-time pastor. And this introvert who struggles writing sermons found herself doing that for every single Sunday. And although I love all the people in this church, I do not always love writing sermons. In fact, I often dislike it. <laughs> But God has been working with me to deny myself, to pick up my cross and follow him as I serve this church, as I get out of my introverted shell and write a sermon each week. We can all do that, you know. We can deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow where Jesus leads us. We can follow the one who denied himself and chose to carry his cross and bear our sins as he died for you and me, as he made a choice to not do his will, but the will of his Father. Perhaps God will call you to a new ministry in this church or in the community. Perhaps God will lay on your heart those who could use a skill that God has given you. It may not be comfortable as you ask God to lead you. It may not be comfortable doing what you are called to do. But if we lose our life for his sake, if we deny ourselves and follow him, then we will truly find it. And what a blessing it will be. So who do you say Jesus is? Only you can answer that. Look at your life 
and see how you are living out your faith. And pray about it, seeking God's will with an open heart. And who knows where God will lead. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer today, we have two birthdays, Joanne Weinmiller and Christine Fry. So let's sing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. I know we need to continue to keep in prayer all of those living in California in the areas with the fires and those who have lost so much that we can't even imagine, just pray for their safety and safety for the firefighters. And let us pray for all of those affected by the storm Laura, for those in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, all along the path that have been affected by this hurricane. And let's pray for our country as we continue to deal with racial injustice and as we deal with how to cope with all the, the issues that face these topics and, and how to love and care for one another regardless of the color of our skin and to, for everyone to be safe, police officers and those on the streets, everyone in this world. And let us continue to pray for those fighting this virus and for those who are working on a vaccine that God will lead and guide them. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we know that you know our hearts. You know our fears and worries the things we cling to. And you know that we love you so much and want to serve you. It's just that sometimes we want to serve you in the way we want and are not always open to how you want us to serve. Our human nature is at odds with how you call us to live. Love sincerely, overcoming evil with good, taking up our cross and following you are not things that come easily to us in this world today. We often want what we want, and that is that. Yet we have committed our lives to you. We have given you our hearts, and we are no longer our own. We are yours. So give us a willing spirit to follow you. Give us a willing heart to serve you and only you. Give us the vision to see where you want us to serve and how, and help us to get out of the way when we want to take over. Denying ourselves does not always come easy to us, but you call us to do that if we will truly be your followers. And it is something we need to do often in our walk with you. Turn off the TV and see what you want us to do. Call the homebound or write a note. Offer to help at a food bank when so many are needing help right now. Begin a prayer ministry for others as we spend an hour in prayer each day as you lead us. Denying ourselves will not come easily to us, for it is contrary to our society and world today. But it is what you call us to do. So please guide us and lead us. May we hear and follow your voice, and may we be not get so comfortable that we forget your calling on our lives. Today we celebrate the birthdays of Joanne and Christine, and we pray, Lord, that they have a wonderful birthday. We lift up those who have lost all in the fires in California, and those who have had to abandon their homes and leave. Help them, Lord, give them comfort and strength, and please keep them and the firefighters safe. 
We pray for rain to stop the fire. And we lift up all the people in Louisiana, Texas, and Arkansas, everywhere this hurricane has left destruction in its path. And we ask that you would be with the families of those who have lost their lives. We pray for justice in our country, that all will be treated equally, and that we will respect the lives of all people, that the color of one's skin or the uniform one wears will not lead to violence and hatred. Please help us, O oh Lord, to care for, to love, and not harm one another. We thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. And so together, let us join our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for bringing your offering to the office and mailing it. Please continue to do that as you are able. And let us join now in our offertory prayer printed in our bulletin. As you invite us to share of our resources with our brothers and sisters in need, we are thankful for all the blessings you give to us and those we can share. Please work through our offerings this day that we can make a difference in our community and in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us join now in our departing hymn, Take My Life, God, Let It Be. statement of faith in all we do. God promises life in all its fullness, not earthly riches, for we know that life is fruitful when lived for others in God's name. Let, Let our worship continue as we pray for one another and as we serve as we are called. May we be mindful of the great calling we have as followers of Christ, for we know that following Jesus means we deny ourselves and take up our cross. Amen. 
Uh, I want to let you know that on September 12th, the Dress for Freedom event will start from 9 to 1. All the dresses that have been donated, and let me tell you, some beautiful dresses have been donated. Our family room downstairs is full of a lot of them, <laughs> and it's wonderful. Thank you for donating so many. If you want to continue donating, September 4th will be our last day for accepting donations out here at the church. But this is a wonderful event. It will take place at Grace Church in Fru Shrewsbury on Plank Road. And like I said, September 12th, 9 to 1, and all of the money goes to help support Sparrow Place. Also want to let you know if anyone would like to be a liturgist like Linda was today for our service, please contact Linda or myself. And I want to let you know that I am in the midst of making fall wreaths for Leg Up Farmer's Market. They'll be there on Tuesday, Lord willing. And the proceeds go to help Spiro Place and also Leg Up Farm. So if you need a fall wreath, Head on out to Leg Up Farmer's Market next week. Thank you so much for being with us, and may God bless you all. Amen.